We have been looking at the life of the prophet Elijah, and we've, we've been examining how the prophet Elijah had been called by God to, to bring the nation of Israel out of a place of bondage, out of a place where they, had, they were living under Jezebel and Ahab, and we saw how the, the, the religious systems and the political systems had joined together and, and created this situation among the nation of Israel where they had actually turned and began to worship false gods. And God's remedy for this was to raise up the prophet Elijah and to send Elijah to challenge the prophets of Baal. During the time that Israel lived under this condition, Israel had, in essence, lost their identity as the people of God. They had lost their awareness of, of God's working in their life. They, they had turned, and, and their religion, their faith, their worship had become nothing more than religious ritual that was acceptable in the culture in which they lived. Y'all still with me? And so God sent the prophet Elijah, and Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. And we looked at the showdown on Mount Carmel where Elijah said to, to, to the false prophets, you call on your God, and I'll call on mine. And, and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And as God always does, God showed up and brought the people back to an awareness that he alone, say he alone, he alone is God. And so after this, Elijah, knowing now that there was a bounty on his head, you can read this in 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah runs and, and he flees to the Mount Horeb. Because he's fearing for his life. He knows Jezebel is out to get him. Y'all still with me? And so God reveals to Elijah what the next step is. He says, okay, Elijah, you've done your part. You have challenged the prophets of Baal. You've begun the work of restoration. You've begun the work of reformation. But now this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go down, and I want you to return on your way to Damascus, and I want you to anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. You shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat of abel Maholai. you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. Elijah, job well done. You've done, Elijah, what I've called you to do. But the work ain't over. Somebody say the work ain't over. Hmm. And it will be, whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha, will kill. Yet I have left 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. So it's like God telling Elijah, Elijah, I've always got a remnant. I hope y'all hear me. I always have a remnant of people who will be willing to fight the good fight of faith. I will always have a remnant of people who are willing to stand in the midst of all types of situations. They have not bowed their knee to Baal, and they are willing. Mm, somebody say willing. willing. I want to ask you the question this morning, 
how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go? The scripture that was read in 1 Kings says, Elijah went from there and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. So Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak on him. Some translations say threw his mantle on him. I love the mantle. So Elisha then left his oxen, ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and and then I will come with you. So go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him, and he went back, and he took his yoke of oxen, and and he slaughtered them. He, He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat, and he gave it to the people, and they ate. And then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Now, it's interesting to note that Elisha came from a pretty well-to-do family. He was involved in the family business. When Elijah found him, he's out plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. You have to have some money to have 12 yoke of oxen. And the only thing that Elijah did The scripture said he cast his mantle on Elijah. And upon being touched by the mantle, Elisha went after Elijah, and Elijah turned around and said, what have I done to you? What do you want? Why are you coming to me? Trying to discourage young Elisha from pursuing that for which he was being called to do. You see, we have this idea, not y'all, me, we have this idea about Christianity, about following Jesus. Let 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 me put it a little different way. That is all about our comfort. It's all about what God is going to do for me. It's all about how God going to meet my need and how God is going to bless me and how God is going to do this for me and God is going to do that for me. And, and, and mind you, God wants us to live a blessed life. He does. God wants us to be healthy. God wants us to have good relationships. God wants us to live fulfilling lives. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. God wants us to have the abundant life on the one hand. Somebody say on the one hand. And on the other hand, God expects us to be willing to follow him at all costs. So when the going gets tough, God expects us to keep on going. Does this make sense? And so Elisha goes back, breaks up the oxen or breaks up the equipment that he's plowing with, takes that, uses that to prepare the meal, feeds his family, and then he kind of goes off and he begins to follow Elijah. Would you be willing to say that Elisha was willing to make a full commitment? In essence, he's saying no turning back. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must be willing to deny yourself, take up your cross, and then follow me. Didn't Jesus say that? Okay. Just making sure. The Apostle Paul makes this statement in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. If you're taking notes, this would be a really good message to write these scriptures down. He says, not that I have now attained. Not that I've now attained or, or have already been made perfect. He said, but I press on to lay a hold of and make my own 
that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me and made me his own. Now, notice what he's saying. He said, it's not that I've already attained. I'm, I, I'm not already there. I'm not already perfect. He said, but, but, but I press on to lay a hold of that for which Christ has laid a hold of me. So you see, beloved, when Jesus called us, he called us for something. There's something that God wants out of us. That's why he called us. So he can equip us and prepare us for that for which he called us. Oh, y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. But there's a process. Somebody say there's a process. Now, Elisha goes and he follows the prophet Elijah, and the only thing it says is that Elisha served Elijah. Now, when you go in and you start reading 2 Kings, there came a time when the king needed to call him prophet because he wanted to know the outcome of the war. And so he said, is there any prophets left in Israel? And somebody said, yeah, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, that poured water on the hands of Elijah. For 12 to 14 years, the only thing Elisha did was pour water on the hands of the man of God. For 14 years, that's all he did. That's it. He's pouring water on the hands of the man of God. He's serving the man of God. He's keeping his hands clean. Oh, y'all, y'all stay with me. He's keeping the hands of the ministry clean so that the ministry can do what God called them to do. But in the process of him serving the man of God, he's being equipped to become prophet in his place. We can't do what we have not been taught to do. One of the major problems in the church in the West, yes, America, one of the major problems, we do not want to be discipled. We don't want to do it. It's me and Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. But Jesus said, go make disciples. Well, if I haven't been discipled, how can I make a disciple? I don't know what it takes to disciple if I haven't been discipled. I know what that's like. I remember when I first started getting involved in ministry. And I went to my pastor and I said, I want to. I want to serve more. He said, yeah, there's a calling on your life. Good. He said, I'll be here in the morning. I said, okay. I thought he was getting ready to give me a preaching schedule. (laughs) And I showed up. Ready. I said, what you want me to do? He said, the restroom. I said, the what? (laughs) He said, the restroom. We need somebody to clean the restroom. God God didn't call me to clean the restroom. God called me to preach. That's what I thought. I didn't tell him. That's what I thought. Okay, I'll clean the restroom. So I cleaned the restrooms for a while. He said, um... I got something new for you to do. I said, what's that? He said, well, we want to bring you on staff. I'm like, oh, I'm getting closer to preaching now. (laughs) And he brought me on staff. And y'all know what I did for about two and a half years? Bulletins. Yep. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Made the bulletins, put the bulletins together, folded the bulletins, cut the bulletins, gave out the bulletins. That's Reverend Williams. He good at passing out bulletins. <laughs> Said we need some mushrooms. Nope, I still ain't figured that one out. That's why we got you. No, I'm just joking. Uh, 
So I, then I started ushering. Then they were trying to put the music department together. I was a drummer, so I started playing drums and ushering and putting bulletins together. Then I got another promotion because he needed somebody to work on his media. So I began to do radio. Started putting his radio broadcast together. Started putting his television broadcast together. Did all of that. That's what I did. Then I got to preach. I was with him for 20 years. And it took about seven or eight before I even preached. I had to learn what it really meant to be in ministry. See, this was some, some of us, not y'all, some of us have a misconception about what ministry is about. Y'all see me and Pastor Josh up here on Sunday, you say, ooh, that's what I want to do. No, you don't. Not if God didn't call you to do it. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Mess around, lose your salvation. No, I'm just joking. But that's what Elisha did. For 14 years, hmm. 1 Kings 19, this gets good. 